Hi, this is 1.6, Applications of Linear Systems for Linear Algebra. What we want to do is look at some applications, and so that's what we're going to be doing, and so I'm going to give a couple, and then there's also another example in the book that you can work with, but some of it talks about having kind of a net zero effect, and so your input is going to match your output somehow, some way. And so what we can do is represent this with a matrix, and that matrix will show that equality come out when we're all done with it. So let's read this example, number one. Suppose we have an economy that has coal, electric, and steel sectors. The output of each sector is distributed amongst each sector by the table. The columns are each sector's output, and the rows are each sector's input. We want to find equilibrium prices that will make each sector's income match its expenditures. So we want to look at this. Leon Tief is a person who developed a lot of this. So the output of coal is going to be this column. Electric is going to be this column. Steel is going to be this column. Notice what each one of these columns add up to. Well, it's going to be 1, representing 100%. So coal's output is going to be 100% of whatever they're putting out. And then electricity is 100%, 100%. So each one of them are putting out that much. However, when we go across, this is the percentage that's going to be bought by coal. This is the percentage that's going to be bought by electric of each one of those sectors. And this one's going to be bought by steel for each one of those sectors. That doesn't necessarily add up to one because you're taking from three different sectors in what you're purchasing. So that's going to be a little bit different. So how are we going to use a vert, uh, matrix for this? We need some variables here. This is the price of total output of coal. This P sub E is the price of total output of electric. And then P sub S would be the price of total output of steel. Now, one other thing to note in here, when you have electric to electric, this point 0.1, that means that the electric company is using part of their electricity for their electric company. That's what that means. And similar with steel to steel, that's used steel, they're using steel within their company for that. Or it's an expenditure that they're writing off or something like that that they have to use. So I'm going to use the rows here now to write these equations. So the price of coal is going to be equal to 0 price of coal plus 0.3 price of electric plus 0.7 price of steel. That would be the overall price that we're going to be working with for coal. So then here are my three equations that I do get. Now we want to turn this into a homogeneous situation though, and so we want to get everything on one side and combine all like terms. So I'm going to bring this one, for instance, over, combine it with that, and then make all of these the opposite sign. So then my three modified equations are right here. Well, what are we going to do with this one? Now we're going to go put it into an augmented matrix and go ahead and try to solve this. So the augmented matrix then would just be the coefficients. So I think the only thing that might be confusing here is that we did have a 1, a 1, and a 1 here. So when I bring this over, that just gives me my 0.9. Here's my augmented matrix. If I put that into the calculator or else you solve it by hand, I'm going to get... So here we go. Here's our matrix that we do end up with. So we have a free variable. If you look at the steel, that one is free. And so if we want to calculate this out... So we can choose a price for steel, and then the other two will fall off of that. So here's our vector that we do end up with. Price of steel would be multiplied by each one of those factors. So if we take the price of steel is equal to, for instance, 100 million, then we could get the price of coal would be, I rounded that now, so that's 96 million dollars and then the price of electricity would be 86 million dollars. This would put us at equilibrium. Okay, so that's one example that we can use. All right, example number two. Let's go ahead and read this one. We want to balance chemical equations. So we're going to balance the following chemical equation using matrices. This is a reaction between ferrous oxide and carbon producing iron and carbon dioxide. 
So what we do is we take the molecules have to match up depending upon different situations. But some of you, like I said, are familiar with this. And so we can take a balance of a certain amount of uh, these, certain amount of these, certain amount of these, certain amount of these, so that does match up, which means that we do have to balance our atoms that we do have, the quantity of them from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So what comes in matches what comes out. It's just in different form. So I can write each one of these into a vector. So there's two ferrous and three oxygen atoms in this situation. So I'm going to write this as ferrous, oxygen, and then carbon. And then same thing over here, ferrous, oxygen, carbon, all three of those. So I have those all set up. Now I want to go ahead and try to balance them with my x1, x2, x3, x4. So I'm taking x1 times the first one, x2 times the second one, and then that should be equal to x3 times this ferrous, which is iron, and then the x4 times the 0, 1, 2. So if I can solve for x1, x2, x3, x4, I'm going to go ahead and have my balance that I do needed by those coefficients. So we're going to make this homogeneous, boom, boom, take everything to one side, and then let's set it up into an augmented matrix. So here's my reduced form that I do have. So it looks like that x4 is free. So with x4 being free, I can go ahead and solve for the rest. So since x4 is free, I end up with x1, x2, and x3 all in terms of x4. And so what I can do now is pick a value. When I pick a value, notice these values that I have for each one of these, and then they are divided by three. We need integer values, so we're gonna work with that. And I forgot to change the signs because I'm bringing this over to the other side of the equation. So I gotta bring that over to the equal sign. So the equal sign is right here. So let's let x4 equal to three. That then means that I'm going to end up with this one right here being two times x4. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, let me multiply that. Just two. And then this one would be two times x4, which would give me six, and this would be one-third times three, which would give me one. So balancing this out then would give me, so now my balanced equation is one ferric oxide, six carbons, two irons, I think I called that ferrous, that was wrong before, it's iron, and then three carbon dioxides. That would give me my balance that I do need. All right, so chemical reactions. A lot of you have done all this stuff, so that would be quite fun to deal with. All right, there's a third example in the book that deals with traffic flow, and the traffic flow I find to be pretty interesting. You can figure out roundabouts moving in and moving out in a network. So look at that example, and then you should be good to go for the gift that I do have. If you see this thing, that means MATLAB, which means use your calculator to do the augmented matrix solving. All right, thanks. Section 1.6. I hope you have a great day.